This is Red Bluff. It's located 15 minutes northwest of Columbia, Mississippi. The community closest to Red Bluff is Morgantown. Red Bluff is a unique attraction. It's known as Mississippi's Little Grand Canyon. It's a geologic feature formed by natural erosion and it continues to grow larger each year. That erosion reveals colorful sediments and layers that are beautiful to see. Another great thing about Red Bluff is the hiking trails. The main trail drops by 200 feet and leads from the top rim of the bluff down to the bottom near railroad tracks. There are branching trails that also allow hikers to divert into the colorful heart of Red Bluff or to explore a beautiful stream. However, be aware that the trails are not maintained and should not be attempted by anyone with a medical condition. One item of considerable interest is a wrecked train. The train cars are located near the bottom of Red Bluff on the banks of the Pearl River. In the past, the train wreck has been incorrectly identified as having occurred in 1901 or 1907. However, those accidents were reported by the Red Bluff Daily News, which is a newspaper in California, not Mississippi. The train wreck at the bottom happened on December 24, 1968. Recent rains had created a slide and had destabilized the tracks. A train consisting of three locomotives and several wood chip hopper cars was heading south. When the train reached the slide, the first two locomotives made it across. However, the third locomotive, GMNO number 613, did not. It derailed, went down the bank, and into the Pearl River. All of the hopper cars that followed also derailed. No people were injured in this accident. Through some research, I was able to contact Mr. Charles McCarty. Mr. McCarty visited the wreck site the day of the accident and provides many interesting details. On December 24th, Christmas Eve, 1968, train 33 on the Gulf Mobile, Ohio Railroad was coming south en route to Bogalusa and had uh, an SD40, number 921, a GP30 and a GP35 613, and they were between White Bluff and Morgantown, where the track run parallel to the Pearl River. And they encountered a slide that come come out of the bluffs. And the first two engines made it over, but the 613 turned over and it slid into the river. And then here come about I'm gonna say 10 or so loaded chip hoppers. And they just piled up and it was a terrible mess. And my dad, Kay McCarty, was a telephone lineman at Bogalusa, equipment maintainer. And he had done been up there and checked the situation out, see what he would need because it tore the lines down when they derailed. Broke poles off, what have you. And so he came back to Bogalusa to get his supplies he needed. He came by the house to pick me up. And I remember he come, he come to my bedroom door. He said, son, 33 derailed in the bluffs. And there's an engine in the river. Do you want to go back up there with me? Yes, sir. So I jumped up and I got ready pretty quick. <laughs> and we took off up there. And you, there was access into the wreck site, but a man on some land that joined that uh, joined the, the uh, railroad and he gave the railroad permission to drive through his uh, road to get to the tracks and we had to walk probably almost a quarter mile to get to the get to the derailment site and we got there and it was cold cold that morning sun wasn't shining yet and, then, and the, some of the track gang had done had done built fires to try to stay warm and they had already done some track work but there was hoppers on them. I they on the track all turned over and chips everywhere. And uh, chips went right to, to, to Crown Villa back at Bogalusa. And they all spilled that. It was a mess. And so uh, I looked down and saw the engine. Daddy pointed it out to me. There in the center of the engine down there in the river. And I looked and sure enough it was laying 
on this side in the river, just the nose sticking out of the water, because the river was, was up. And uh, so uh, he got busy was trying to get the get the wires. What he did, he brought some stuff called twist. He went back to the this furthest uh, pole there uh, and, and tied the wires to the to up to the pole and run the, the twist under the railroad track up on the west side of the derailment, run it through the woods on the side of the bluff around to the north pole and tied it back together so they could have communications. He done that and uh, he said, son, it's get cold now, get up on that 921 there with Mr. Davis. Fred Davis was the engineer. And uh, he said, okay, so I just watched what was going on, you know, and just, I don't know, just excited and anxious, you know. And because uh, that was really my first time I'd ever seen anything that spectacular. And ended off in the river, you know, and I could just imagine trying to visualize in my mind the wreck as it happened, you know, the engine turning over and sliding off in the river, and here comes the hoppers in on top of it, you know, and all the chips everywhere. But anyway, after a while, I did get up on the, on the 921 there with Mr. Davis. And uh, I, had, I had ridden with him before Bo Gluss on a switch engine. His name was Fred Davis. And I sat there, and, and uh, it was a good morning, that engine. It was, you know, and and uh, it got along about, about 11 o'clock. He said, Charlie, you hungry? I said, well, I could eat something with Davis. He said, look at my bag, get you a pack of crackers and can that potted meat. <laughs> so I ate potted meat and crackers on the 921. And, uh, and then he got through with this, putting his lines, tying his lines together. And uh, so he said, uh, come and go with me around to, to White Bluff and uh, ride with uh, Q-Ball Sheridan. He was engine on had an engine on, on each end of the b rep side. Q-Ball, he was working the, the north end of the wreck, assisting the, the wrecker as they were getting the car off the track out of the way so they could build the main line back. So I went to White Bluff and uh, so when, when they came back up there with the engine, I got on the cue ball and I rode him back and forth between the wreck side and, and the White Bluff. But what he was doing, he was, when they would get hooked to a car, if the if the wrecker couldn't pull it some, for some reason or other, he would help, you know, move the, move the wrecker and move the cars, you know. Anyway, uh, it got on there late that night, and, and we went, went back to Bogalusa. But it was a it was a thrill for a 14 year old boy to be up there. I spent all day long up there, and uh, I don't remember the sun ever shining in that one particular area. It stayed so cold, you know. But uh, but it just uh, and I can still see it to this day, you know, and something I'll always remember. This right here is. A, it's independent brake lever, and it came off the 613. And the, the story behind that is uh, Donald Starks was the engineer for the Gemino and, of course, the ICG, and then the CN. But he was, at the time, he hadn't been working very long. He was still a brakeman. And they had pulled the engine out of the river. It took two big wreckers to get it out. And uh, they had to drive pilot for the wrecker to put that river on. You know, because the, the river was way down below the tracks and they had to pull it a good ways up, you know. So uh, they drove piling and they got, in the, I think, a wreck out of Meridian. And they had one out of Meridian and one, I think, out of Jackson, Tennessee. And they worked together to get it out of the, out of the river. And uh, I thought for a long time they put the engine on a flat car, but I did some research and talked to someone that was up there and he said they put him back on his back on his truck, back on his wheels. But anyway, Donald Starks were working the brakeman, they got everything loaded up, tied down, and fixed, take it to Jackson. He stumbled over something in late in the afternoon. He looked down and it was just in the, in the brake lever. He got it and put it in his in his grip, in his bag, and kept it. And uh, so he got in the engine service and he used this engine, this, uh, this brake lever, on the high C engines. They were different. They did come kind of just straight out. And 
this one fit perfectly. It, by the shape it is, it's more easy, more easy to, uh, to, to work with. So he kept it and used it his entire career on the on ICG and the CN. But uh, I, I hauled crews for 28 years for the ICG, IC, and Fort CN. And I had to go down to Bogalusa and I picked Donald up. He worked in the, uh, work in the turn. And uh, he said, Child, I want to be retiring in uh, a couple of weeks. And I've got something I want to give you. So we got down to, to the yard off of Bogalusa. He said, Come with me. He went to his locker and he gave me this brake lever. And uh, he said, I know you were there that day, and I know you'll be proud of this. I want to give it to you. So I've had it over you know, for, you know, since that time. And I really I cherished it. So he, he passed on. And, uh, and this right here is an HO scale uh, GP35. And I numbered it 613. I painted it myself and weathered it up and made it 613. And uh, it's pretty accurate. And uh, we got correct horn on it. I don't have the correct trucks and all, you know, but, but the number and everything else is pretty, pretty much like 613. But I can just see it in that river. Just the nose sticking out. And it was, it was several weeks before they attempted to get the water or get the engine out of the, out of the river. The river had gone way down and my daddy got up on this engine and took the radio out. I was still in, in the side of the river. So, uh, but it, it just, uh, to me it's hit part of, part of history. When 33 got to Wanella, they had to uh, stop there and do some work. I don't know if it pick up, car, set out, or both. And it was always custom for the flagman or the conductor to ride the head end from Wanella on into Bogalusa. And so, Tango offered, I don't know if he was a conductor or the flag on the job, but he got on the, on the, the trailing unit, which would have been the 613. And uh, he got to White Bluff, and the engineer called on the radio and said, Tang, we're going to pour it for a cup of coffee. You want, you want a cup of coffee? He got to be up there in a minute. So he gets his stuff together, and he goes and gets on the lead engine. Well, they have it having coffee and about the time we got to coffee pour was when the train derailed and had it not been for a cup of coffee he may have lost his life because he was on this 613 he would have been on it you know he then went to the head end to get a cup of coffee so that's the story of the red bluff train accident GM&O Locomotive 613 was later recovered from the river. It was sent to Jackson, Tennessee for repairs and, amazingly enough, put back into service. Here are a few photos showing number 613 working in 1971, three years after the accident. On May 30th, 2021, the Macomb Railroad Depot Museum was ravaged by a fire set by an arsonist. If you've enjoyed this video, consider donating by clicking on the link in the description.